we'll get started. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining the College Essentials Q&A webinar. My name is Michelle Heavey and I work with the AC Hub in student events. So I coordinate orientation and student events throughout the year. We're so pleased you're joining us today for this session and you're taking the right steps to get started on your journey and path to success at Algonquin College. So before we get started in the presentation, I'm just going to go over a couple of housekeeping items. If you have a question for our panelists, we ask that you please type it in the Q&A tab. You'll see that along the bottom of the screen. But if you have a technical or event related question, please feel free to use the chat and our event support team will be able to assist you there. We won't be using the raised hand feature for this event. So um, just ask your question in the Q&A. Um, we won't be calling upon you um, to ask your question live. So just can use the Q&A. You can see and hear us, but we can't or we can't see or hear you. And this webinar is being recorded and it will be added to the Algonquin College com slash orientation website if you'd like to watch it again tomorrow or another time um, leading up to AC day one. So now we do have a jam packed agenda um, with a bunch of college um, experts on the call today. So they're going to be sharing a little bit about their department. Um, and then we will be opening up the floor for the Q&A session around 10 a.m. Um, and then we'll be reading out your questions live at that point. So we'll get started um, with orientation. So next steps is, um, so you did a great job joining us today for the College Central's Q&A webinar. But um, after this, you can feel free to check out the AlgonquinCollege.com orientation website and we have our AC startup webinars. So those are recorded webinars and they go into a little bit more specific details um, on student life, health and wellness, achieving academic success, admissions and final aid, admissions of financial aid. And then um, after you do your online prep, we want to invite all of you here today to our virtual AC day one, which is on Tuesday, September 8th. And AC day one um, is your first day of school. So this consists of your program orientation where you'll learn about your program, meet your program coordinator, professors and peers. And there's also um, a lot of free social activities that you can take part in. So this um, consists of like online workshops. So there's um, do it yourself coasters. You can learn about photography, um, investing basics. So this is all free and you should have received an email last night that would invite it that you would have um, received the registration link. So you can sign up for virtual AC day one now. The registration is now open. Um, so please do that. And um, more details can be found on the ogonquincollege.com slash orientation website. So now onto our first presenter. I am pleased to introduce Martha Marr um, to present on student support services. Good morning, everyone. I'm certainly pleased to be speaking with you today and welcome you to Algonquin College. Um, I just want to let you know that Student Support Services has a broad range of supports to help you succeed at Algonquin College. And I'm going to talk about some of them today in depth and others just refer to so that you get accustomed to learning about the services that you can access at Algonquin College. Next slide, please, Michelle. So first of all, we want to welcome you to Algonquin and we want to acknowledge that you're starting your college journey in a unique time in a pandemic and a lot of what you're going to engage with is going to be in a virtual world and what we want you to know at student sports services is that everything that you would receive in a regular start at Algonquin College is available to you virtually you can receive any kind of service virtually uh, as you start your academics and your college life. Next slide, please, Michelle. So here are some of the services at Algonquin College. There are lots more, but I'm um, just pointing these out to you because they may be services that you wanna engage with right away and in your first semester. So the AC Hub, the AC Hub um, is uh, all things student engagement. So you will find events there. They do marketing calm. Um, if you are on campus, it's a, it's a welcoming space to come in and use and study and do joint projects with um, fellow students. Um, but you will find all things student engagement and events under the AC Hub brand. Aspire AC is for any student who's kind of non-traditional, somebody who's going to 
college and they might be the first person in their family to go to college. They might be a new Canadian. Uh, they might be somebody who um, is really stretching their finances to be able to do this and going out on a limb, et cetera. Um, the services that they provide will help you succeed at Algonquin College if you find yourself in one of those categories. The Center for Accessible Learning is for students who may need accommodations to their academics, and I'll talk more about that in depth. Counseling services, again, available to you. It's formal counseling, uh, clinical counseling that's supervised by PhD, um, and I'll talk more about that as we go. Employment Support Center, if you're somebody who's looking for a job, um, we have job board called Hire AC at the Employment Center, and it is only available to Algonquin College students. So there's lots of part-time jobs on there. You can also make an appointment with an, uh, make an appointment with an employment specialist, and they'll help you with resume, cover letter, practice interviewing, etc. Health Services is in our C building. And um, there you can uh, receive any kind of health services that you would receive at a clinic or a medical clinic, as well as support if you're in a program where you do need to get immunizations and tests before you go on your placement in the community. The library um, is again available virtually to all students um, and anything that you need with regards to research, etc. will be found there. The Mamadoswin Center is a, a place on campus for um, Indigenous students and it's, it's quote unquote a gathering place. So a place where you can go and be at home with your culture and receive support um, and also invite guests to learn about your culture if you are an Indigenous student. The Office of the Ombudsman is available to students who kind of need some conflict resolution once they've exhausted the regular uh, routes of solving things. Uh, peer tutoring is available to you and supported by various departments in the college. Um, you can receive support from a senior student in any subject uh, and that student has acquired a B plus or better in that subject. Project Lighthouse is all things uh, sexual assault prevention. So if you're somebody who wants to get involved in uh, keeping the campus safe, um, that project might be something that you want to get involved in. Student Learning Center. Um, Student Learning Center has coaching and workshops on communications, computers, math, English, etc. And you can join those. You'll see a schedule of those at the Student Learning Center. The Test Center is a place where you can book placement tests, uh, pre-access to programs tests, um, and you can also book a test if you have a conflict with the regular schedule for exams um, and you have to just get the permission of your professor and then go to the test center and book your own test for that. The umbrella project is all things harm reduction. So students who use substances, we want to keep them safe at Algonquin College. So we have a broad range of harm reduction measures and uh, programs available at the college. So if you're somebody who's interested in that area, um, then that's a project that you might want to get involved in as well. The Volunteer Center at the college, again, uh, has gone virtual um, and you can get involved in any kind of volunteer work within the college, outside in the community. Um, it's all virtual events presently and there's also a co-curricular record if you do get involved in any of these projects. Um, and it's a, it's a record that you receive that goes along with your academic record and you can use it to sort of uh, gain an advantage in applying for positions. You can show employers all that you did outside of your academics while you were at Algonquin College. And the Welcome Center. So the Welcome Center is again virtual. You can reach them at extension 7200. Um, and what the Welcome Center does is welcome you to Student Sports Services and also book any appointments that you might need with uh, the Center for Accessible Learning, Counseling, Employment Services, etc. So they'll help you gain access to these supports. Next slide, please, Michelle. So one of the services that I wanted to focus on today is if you are a student who requires any kind of accommodation for your learning, or if you have received this kind of support during high school or previously, um, you want to start to register for the Center for Accessible Learning. We call it CAL. Um, 
ASAP. You want to do this sooner rather than later um, because if you do wait to the start of semester to start to access this service, you're going to be on wait lists and waiting for your first appointment. So register now um, and you do that through the Welcome Center that I mentioned and you start to um, gather the necessary paperwork to apply for this and you will first step meet with a, what's called a learning strategist and they'll help to sort out a plan with you as you work through your academics at Algonquin College. Next slide, Michelle. Counseling services, again, I wanted to bring this particular support to your attention right away as you engaged in this seminar. Um, you are entering college and it's a new adventure for you and it's also going to be a little bit different from anything that you've done before. Um, and because you're entering that world during a pandemic, during a unique time in all of our histories, um, we want to ensure that you can access counseling services. Um, counseling services has three streams. One is uh, mental health. So if you're, ch you're challenged in any kind of way with regards to your own mental well-being, um, you can gain appointment at counseling services and also career services. So you can get career clarity counseling and career counseling through counseling services. And then if there's just other stresses, it's, a, it's another stream. So our counselors specialize in three areas. Next slide, Michelle. And I wanted to bring your attention to Aspire AC uh, just because it's close to my heart. I'm the manager for that program. Um, but I wanted to let you know that if you're a student where this is new and this is unique and you, you don't have people in your life that have done this before, you don't know the culture, um, we have services for you. So we have student mentors. We, we can cover the cost of any peer tutoring you have. We have a job coaching program that walks you through workplace literacy curriculum and you can apply retroactively if you complete that uh, for a general education credit. And again, help with all of the rest that's listed here. So welcome to Algonquin College. We're certainly glad you engaged with us today and um, hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations and get a lot of knowledge out of uh, engaging today. Thanks. Thank you so much, Martha. Next up, we have Janine from Financial Aid. Janine. Good morning, everyone. My name is Janine McHale. I'm a financial aid officer here at the college. Uh, part of my role is to help administer the OSAP program. So I'm going to talk about that briefly, talk about some bursaries, and then how to contact us. So next slide, please. So if you have not already applied for OSAP, it is not too late. You can still do that. In order to qualify for OSAP, which is the Ontario Student Assistance Program, you have to be a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident, or protected person. And to receive it through Ontario student loans, you do have to be an Ontario resident. This means you have to have lived in the province of Ontario for 12 months uh, consecutively without attending post-secondary school. If you have um, came from another province, you will have to apply to that specific province that you um, lived in for the last 12 months. If you have come from uh, international and you've arrived and say you arrived three months ago, that is okay. You still qualify for OSAP, so you can still apply. To receive full-time funding, you do have to be enrolled in 60% of your course load. Or if you are registered and you have a disability, you can take a 40% course load and receive full-time funding. It is based on your specific financial needs. So everybody does receive different amounts. It is something we get a question quite a bit about is how much do I get? You will have to fill out your application first and then we can answer those questions going forward. So next slide, please. So how do you apply? So you just go to ontario.ca-osap. Your application will be there. You will fill out a profile and then you will do an individual application for each uh, study period that you attend school. 
if again you are applying from another province and you go to that province's um, student loan assistance program and apply with them so next slide please so we also have hundreds of bursary scholarships and awards that are offered through algonquin college now the great thing about this is that it is what we consider free money because you do not have to pay it back. So unlike the loans you would get through OSAP, this money that you get with bursaries and scholarships, you don't pay it back. So it is a great resource. Um, you'll see there's different types of money that you can get. So bursaries typically are based on your financial needs. Scholarships are done by department, so it will based on some of your academic um, excellence that you're doing. And awards, again, are by department. So there are different types of free money out there for you. Next slide, please. So bursaries, you can apply through bursaries on your Access account. You just go to the bursary portal, you will fill it out, it takes about 10 minutes, and this puts you in for all the different bursaries that we have at the college. So you can go to our website to get an idea of the different ones that we have. However, going and applying through this one portal, you'll automatically be submitted for them all. Every semester, there is bursaries and awards given out. So you do have to apply every uh, semester. So for the fall semester, it does, the bursary portal will open on August 24th, and it will stay open until October 5th. So again, August 24th to October 5th, the bursary portal will be open for you to go in and make your application. Next slide, please. And since we're not on campus, you, you can still get a hold of us. You will go to the registrar's office, and you can go to financial aid and go to financial aid officers. Every one student on campus has a contact. We are divided out by program. So depending on the program you're enrolled in, you will have a certain financial aid officer. So you just do the drop down box of where you're studying, whether it's Ottawa, Perth, Pembroke, you will say if it's out of province or Ontario, and then you'll hit your um, program that you're enrolled with and that will prompt whoever your financial aid officer is. So for example, if you're taking a gas program, so a general arts and science program, I will be your financial aid officer and it will give you my email address and you can email me any questions that you have um, and then we're there to help you and we support you throughout your application and any questions you have, you can certainly reach out to us. Thank you and enjoy your time at the college. Thank you so much, Janine. Okay, next up we have Anna from our registrar's office. Thank you and good morning, everyone. My name is Anna. I'm a client service officer in the registrar's office, and I'd like to welcome all of our new students. We're so happy you could join us today. We're just going to take a quick look at your next steps and what you can expect. So, first of all, congratulations, everyone. We're assuming everyone here has applied and been accepted. And uh, after the acceptance, you would have probably already confirmed your acceptance on Ontario colleges. Uh, just a quick note on confirmations. If you received multiple offers from Algonquin or from other colleges, you can only confirm one offer at a time. You may change your acceptance as long as your offer has not expired. So if you're still waiting to hear from another institution and you have already accepted at Algonquin and then you hear back from, let's say, you know, another college and you want to go with that offer, you can confirm that on, on Ontario colleges and it will override everything else that you had previously confirmed. So that's just a little note. We want you to stay here. We don't want you to go anywhere else, but you do have that option on Ontario colleges. Uh, your uh, most important step probably after your confirmation would have been to pay your tuition deposit. So this year, as you know, we lower the non-refundable tuition deposit from $500 to $250. We just wanted to make it easier for everyone to secure their seat uh, in the program and plan for their future. 
we want to assure you that we've got everything in place to support you now and when your classes start. Next slide, please. Now, for those of you that have a conditional offer with admission requirements that are still outstanding, um, I would have hoped that you would have been in touch with the registrar's office because the deadline to submit those documents was August 1st. So if you have been in contact with us and you've asked us to hold on to your spot, you're still working on getting the conditions or your final transcripts into us, then you're, you should be good to go. If you haven't and you've received an email from our team telling you that your offer has been canceled, um, but you're still working on your conditional acceptance, uh, your conditional outstanding requirements, just get in touch with the registrar's office. As long as there's still space in your program, we will be able to reinstate your admission and uh, you'll just be able to uh, touch base with us and let us know, you know when you'll get that into us. So next slide, please. A quick note on your registration. Uh, registration has already occurred and timetables were released yesterday, August 17th. So everyone here should be able to see uh, their schedules on access if you've already logged in. And your schedule basically is just, uh, uh, it'll show you what classes you're enrolled in for the term, start and end times, your instructor's information, etc. And with regards to timetable, next slide please. Sorry. With regards to uh, changes on your schedule, you are in charge of that yourself and you can log into the self-serve feature on Access where students can add, drop, or change course sections. You have up until September 4th. So basically, let's say you have your English class Monday morning at nine o'clock, but you also have your yoga at nine o'clock. Um, you can log into Access, it'll show you uh, if that English class is offered during different times, and then it'll give you the option to move that section to a different time. So please feel free to play around and uh, you have options available there. Now I wanted to touch base a little bit on transfer of credit and exemptions. So basically, students can apply for an exemption for individual courses in your program or for a gen ed elective. If you've previously taken uh, a similar course with similar learning outcomes at another institution or another program within the college. Uh, and you can play around on access, read through what the steps are to apply for getting that, that credit exempted. Um, if you're applying for exemption for a course outside of the college, there is a $10 fee. If you're applying for transfer credit from one course at Algonquin to another course at Algonquin, there is no fee and uh, you can apply for any exemptions at any of our campuses using the Access Online uh, Portal. So Ottawa, Perth, and Pembroke students are all welcome to use this portal to apply for exemptions. And uh, as my colleague Janine just mentioned, um, you can also use Access to apply for your bursaries. So the applications are available from August the 24th to October the 5th, and the application cycle is only open once per term. So only registered students for the current term can apply through this portal. So just keep that in mind. Next slide, please. And uh, now we're gonna talk about your, the difference between uh, your program and your course withdrawals. So unfortunately, lack of attendance does not constitute a withdrawal. So not logging into your courses online to your Blackboard and or not submitting assignments, et cetera, it doesn't mean that you've withdrawn from the course. If you're actually thinking about withdrawing from a course or a program, you must follow the official procedure and withdraw uh, the withdrawal dates on your Access account. So again, simply failing to not log in for classes doesn't constitute a withdrawal and this can adversely affect your marks and any refunds. Now, uh, with regards to the program withdrawal, so classes are starting September the 8th. You have 10 days after that to officially withdraw from your program, so that's September the 21st. That's the official refund date. September 21st is the last day to withdraw from a program for the fall term and receive a partial refund of your fees. If you withdraw by or before this date, you're eligible to receive your tuition refund 
minus the non-refundable $250 tuition fee deposit. So keep that in mind. That non-refundable tuition deposit, you're not getting that back, but you will get back uh, whatever else you paid uh, for your program for that term. If you withdraw after September 21st, no refund is available to you and you're liable for the full payment of the outstanding fees for that term. Again, please, if you're going to withdraw, you have to send a request in writing to the registrar's office and we will be able to take care of that for you. If you'd like to withdraw from a course, uh, the last day to do so is November the 13th to withdraw from your fall 2020 courses without academic penalty. So that just basically means if you log into Access and you drop the course, you're not going to see an F on your transcript. If you're not able to use that feature, uh, you can certainly just reach out to your program coordinator or your student success specialist, and they will get in touch with the registrar's office so that we can withdraw you and make sure that you're not penalized uh, for you know, not adhering to that withdrawal date. Now, please keep in mind that you're gonna to have to refer course by course for the different dates. So on your schedule, it will tell you what your soft withdrawal date is, your hard withdrawal dates, and any kind of academic penalty dates. And uh, I think that's about it for the registrar's office at this point. If you've got any questions, just please put it in the Q&A and uh, I will make sure that we get that answered for you. Thank you everyone and congratulations. Thank you, Anna. Okay, next up we have Olivia from our campus services team. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Olivia Routliff and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about campus services. Um, I'm a proud AC alumni myself, so I know a little bit about what you're going through as a new student. Um, so anyways, welcome, we're excited to have you. Next slide, please. So there are several areas that fall under the campus services umbrella, and these include food services, print services, retail, parking, locker, and card services, as well as residents. Next slide, please. So for those of you who have been wondering, um, there will be food services locations open uh, at the Ottawa campus, providing employees and students who are studying and learning um, a variety of options for the fall 2020 term. Not all locations will be open, and some might actually have modified hours. Uh, so hours of operation and all of these wonderful details will be available closer to the end of the month on the food services website. And you can see like right where the photo is, there's a link to the food services website. So feel free to make a note of that or I can put it in the chat later. Next slide, please. The Canvas store. So I've received a few questions in the chat already um, about course materials and courseware. Uh, so the Canvas store is your one-stop shop. Uh, right now you can shop online 24-7 at thecampusstore.ca and this is where you'll get courseware. So say you're in baking and pastry arts, for example, you would get um, any courseware that you need there. Uh, you can order your course materials, which my colleague Amanda will go through in a little bit. Um, and then of course, if you're studying from home or even if you're on campus, you can purchase that hoodie that you've had your eye on for Monday mornings when you want to be cozy. Uh, now we are currently offering free shipping in Canada and the US until August 31st. So it's definitely advantageous to take advantage of that. Um, and we also have contactless curbside pickup. So for folks who are in the Ottawa area um, and you don't want to ship to your house and you want to just come pick it up, you can do that. Our team is awesome and they've been working quite a bit. Uh, so if you have any questions, concerns, you need support, you can always reach out directly to them at campusstore at algonquincollege.com and you can call them as well if you'd like. And then one quick note to make when you are making a purchase on the Campus Store website, you do have to create an account, uh, much like uh, other online retailers. You can use your personal email or your college email if you'd like. Next slide, please. So printing on campus. So Algonquin College provides uh, 100 eight and a half by 11 black and white printed pages each term uh, to students who have paid the IT fee. And that is the case for the 2020 and 2021 academic year. This will show up as a $10 print balance on your account, um, which will be added to your account at the start of each term. So you will have access to on-campus printers for the fall term, as well as the print shop. Um, if you have any questions about printing, feel free to put it in the chat, or you can take a look at algonquincollege.com slash print, and it will show you all the details um, for printing. Next slide. 
parking on campus. So this has been a really uh, quite a few questions about this as well. Um, so we do have a variety of options uh, for parking on campus and this includes both long term and short term options. So you can pick the one that best suits your need depending on the frequency that you'll be on campus in the fall term. We're not selling permits in person this year. So parking permits are available for purchase online only and you can do that at algonquincollege.com slash parking. Uh, it's important to note too that parking services is now permitless. So if you've ever been a student at Algonquin before, um, or maybe if you're just used to getting a physical parking permit, that's not the case anymore. Your license plate is now your permit. Um, so that's how they'll make sure that you're in the correct lot by license plate. Um, and one other thing I'd like to note about parking, say you're on campus once every couple weeks, you can park in our park pay and go lot, which is daily rates. And we have an app called Honk Mobile, and that's a form of contactless payment. So if you don't want to, you know, if it's winter time, you don't want to get out and, and go to the parking meter, you can actually pay uh, through the app and it's just linked uh, to your credit card. Next slide, please. So card services, so this is important and I've been getting tons of questions about card services. So for new students, um, you are required to upload a photo online. They are not doing in-person photos this term um, for your AC card. And then if you qualify, um, that will also be used for your UPASS. So the process, this is how it looks. Once you submit your photo online, within a few business days, it's not instantaneous, uh, you'll receive an email if your, if your photos are approved. Um, and it'll, it'll send you a link and that link you click on it and you book your appointment and once you've booked an appointment then you come on that during that time slot to pick up your cards. If your photo is not approved for whatever reason they'll also email you and they'll just let you know you know maybe you had something in your background and you needs to be on a white background and uh, card services will let you know and they'll help you through that process. If you're having trouble submitting your card photo, which happens, uh, you can email photo ID at algonquincollege.com. And again, I can put that in the chat if you'd like, um, and they will help you out. But it may take a couple business days to get back to you just due to the high volume of emails right now. I, I know that there are no returning students on this um, webinar, but if by chance there is, uh, you can now tap to renew your UPASS. So new students, you don't need to tap anything or renew anything, but if you're a returning student, you should have received an email and you can tap to renew your UPASS. Uh, now, any full-time fall term student who is designated by the college as per, uh, participating in remote learning, so that means typically your program is on campus and now you've been put online, um, you can actually opt out of the UPASS program. So if you don't think you'll be using your UPASS, the opt-out is available through the student portal, so AXIS, um, and you can opt out at any time. Um, so if you opt out within 10 business days of the start date of your program, you'll receive a full fee assessment. If you opt out after that, you'll receive a prorated assessment. And the best part is if you opt out and you panic and you actually end up needing a UPASS, you can actually opt back in. So it's quite flexible uh, this term. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them. Next slide, please. Yeah, okay, so that's it for me. Um, all of our information can be accessed by visiting algonquincollege.com slash campus services. Um, and if you need help, I'll be here um, answering questions with the rest of these folks, or you can reach out to us at campus services at algonquincollege.com. Thank you so much, Liv. Yeah. And next up, we have Amanda from Course Material Services. Hi everyone, welcome to Algonquin. My name is Amanda. I'll just take a few minutes today to answer questions about course material um, services and just how to get your course materials. I saw there were a few questions in the Q&A, so hopefully these answer them. Uh, next slide, please. So the most important question, how do I access my course materials? Great question, it's through book list. So you're gonna visit the campusstore.ca to get your book list. So your book list is basically you log in and it's a customized list of all of the books you need for your program. Um, so how you're gonna log in is through your Algonquin College username and password and you're gonna get that through access. So a lot of people think that it's their student number. It's not your student number, it's the username and password you use through your access. Next slide, please. So the easiest way to do it is if everyone has their phone right now, you can scan the QR code and that is going to link you directly to the um, website, as you can see down there, the campusstore.ca slash booklist, and you'll be able to just put in your credentials there and it's very easy. 
log in, you'll be able to see all the books you need, view, purchase them, and there you go. Um, if it's not working for you, sometimes QR codes uh, kind of mess up a bit. Just the link down there, just type that into your web browser, thecampusstore.ca backslash booklist. Give it a couple seconds to scan the QR code. Okay, next slide, please. So once you are in your book list, you're going to be able to view and purchase your required textbooks. So you have different formats. You'll see that on some courses, you'll be able to get a print version, a used version, or a digital. Don't be worried if you don't see all three options. It depends. Sometimes some of our titles don't have digital options. Some don't have used. Um, so some are only available in digital and vice versa. Um, so just make sure you're looking out for those three options. And if they're not all there, that means that they're not available. Um, so as Liv, my colleague Liv said, for fall 2020 term, shipping is available within Canada, US, internationally. So until the end of the month, it's free. Um, and then I believe that if you purchase up to $100 um, after the end of August, you're able to get it for free as well, for free shipping, you won't be charged. Um, we also have contactless curbside pickup will be available. So if you want, if you live close to Algonquin, you can go to Algonquin. Um, and pick up your textbooks that way if you don't really want to wait for the shipping because there are some delays, so maybe that is best for you. Next slide, please. So if you do decide to do the digital resources, we have two options. So this is basically on the right here is the re digital receipt you're going to receive via your email. So if you get a 10 numerical digit code, a Texidium code it's called, you're basically going to redeem this through Texidium, which is an app. So there's just information here. You basically have to register like you would any other app. You have to install it, download apps to install it. Um, and then once it's downloaded, you're able to basically read your textbook anywhere, whether on the bus, anywhere you can use it for offline use. So again, that's a Texidium code and that's 10 numerical digits and you do that through Texidium. Is that how you're gonna redeem it? And then the other option, next slide, please. The other option for digital code, if you get um, your digital receipt and it reads digital code or publisher resource code, you'll see that this is a lot longer and it has both letters and numbers. For this, you don't redeem it through Texidium, you're gonna redeem it through Brightspace. So you're gonna basically go into Brightspace and your instructor will just basically list the instructions for how to um, access this title or they'll just have it readily available for you at Brightspace to download. So super easy, like I said, Texidium code through Texidium, digital code or publisher resource code through Brightspace. Those are basically the main things you need to know. Next slide, please. So if you need any assistance, you can contact myself. I actually run this email account, cmsalgonquincollege.com if you have any questions about your course materials, how to access them and whatnot. If you have more specific questions about the status of your order or just an order in general, it's best to reach out to the campus store directly. So campusstore at algonquincollege.com and they'll be able to help you as well. So good luck everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, next up we have residents and Jonna will be speaking to that. Jonna? Hey guys, welcome to Algonquin. Um, I'm one of the residence life coordinators at residence and I'm going into my fifth year. So I've got lots of knowledge to answer any questions. Uh, next slide, please. Awesome. So who are we? We are your home away from home. So in a normal year, we're the lucky place where you get to wake up five minutes before class and stumble across the road into your lecture hall. Um, we have implemented lots of new things for the pandemic and we're here ready and excited for everyone to move in starting in a couple weeks. Next slide, please. Yeah, um, so one of the best parts about living in residence is all the awesome supports we have here. Um, and we are still here, even though we've gone virtual this year. So a couple of the highlights um, I'd like everyone to know is our front desk is ex accessible 24 seven. Um, and the bonus to the pandemic we've got is now you can text them, which is awesome. So you don't even have to leave your room if you don't want to. Um, and there's also always going to be someone there in case you get locked out. Um, myself, residence life coordinator, the residence life manager, and all the resident advisors will also still be available. Um, it just won't be like a stop by the office type support, more of an email and we can do a Zoom meeting. And we are very lucky uh, to have a counselor in residence um, and she's also still going to be available just for residence um, students a couple days a week this year, but again, she'll be available on Zoom. Next slide, please. 
Awesome. And of course, part of the best part of living in residence is meeting new friends and having fun. So we do plan to still have lots of weekly events and lots of cool things. Um, again, lots of it will be on Zoom. But some cool examples will be some craft making. Uh, we want to run a weekly community community kitchen, which is basically a free dinner. Um, so it would look a little different. We'll deliver lots of supplies to your rooms and pick up any unneeded supplies after, um, but we are still gonna have lots of fun. And one awesome way to get involved is to be a part of the Algonquin Residence uh, Council, which is a cool advocacy, advocacy group if you'd like to be involved. Next slide, please. And that's all I got. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Okay, now we have Patrick from our Students Association. Hey everyone, my name is Patrick Nua. I'm the Senior Manager of Student Life for the Students Association. Next slide. So the Students Association uh, is a nonprofit organization that represents all students across all three campuses. Um, we're a separate entity from the college, so I work for the Students Association and the students, not for the institution. Um, we're led by a board of directors, nine students. Uh, Emily Ferguson is our current president and Robbie Richter is our vice president, as well as have a team of full-time staff. Um, we handle everything from events to clubs, the food cupboard on campus, your health and dental plan, a ton of different venues and much more. Next slide. Uh, so we manage and facilitate all athletics on the Ottawa campus, Perth and Pembroke. Uh, the Ottawa campus, we have a 15,000 square foot fitness facility. Um, Perth and Pembroke, we have smaller ones, but there are fitness facilities on those campuses as well. Um, we encompass varsity sports, so soccer, volleyball, rugby, and I should say basketball. Um, the Impact Zone, which is an MMA boxing gym on campus, and intramural sports. which are sports you can play with your friends in between classes. We're also currently building a 150,000 square foot athletics and recreation center on the Ottawa campus. Next slide. Some of the services we offer. So for, uh, we get a lot of questions during orientation about the health and dental plan. We manage a health and dental plan for all full-time domestic students. So these students must be Canadian citizens. Um, if you have questions about the health and dental plan, you're an international student, those would go through the international center. Um, grad photos, um, the food cupboard. So if you're needing assistance with food security during this situation, obviously COVID has impacted us quite a bit. So if you need help with that, we can help you with that. Housing ad, so if you're looking for a place to live, I'm a huge advocate for residents, so I think you should live there, but it's a great place to live off campus if you want to as well. Uh, grad funding, so when you graduate and you wanna have a party with your friends and celebrate, we provide funding for that. And employee network funding, which is a fund that is provided for um, students that wanna bring in guest speakers um, or just top industry experts to campus to, to talk to students. Next slide. Student life, um, so this is the department that I oversee. So um, events, clubs and communities, which is a great way to get involved with students. Um, all of these um, activities have moved online for the fall semester. Um, the Wellness and Equity Center, which is a space for the 2SLGBTQ and BIPOC community on campus, and they provide a ton of different programming, and then class representatives. Now, one thing I just wanna to touch here on student life, Michelle did talk about uh, virtual AC day one. And she held off on this, which I appreciate very much. Uh, so AC day one is orientation, as we all know, and this is your great first step to it. Um, for orientation this year, in the past, we've hosted a large concert on campus, a carnival on campus. Um, this year, um, the Student Association, the AC Hub, are proud to present the Arkells will be playing a virtual conference or a virtual concert, which is super exciting. Um, and we'll also be doing uh, a stream of a fireworks show later in the night, which is super exciting as well. Next slide. Some of the venues we own and operate, um, the Observatory, which is your campus bar on the Ottawa campus, and the Landing, which is the campus bar on the Pembroke campus. Um, Starbucks, so we own and operate a Starbucks on the Ottawa campus, the Algonquin Commons Theater, which is an 800 person theater that's available on the Ottawa campus, um, and much more. Next slide. And that's it. Uh, thank you for listening to me and hearing me chat. If you want more information about the Student Association, you can always follow us on all the social medias, Instagram. Uh, no, we don't have Snapchat. No, we don't have TikTok. But we're going to get TikTok this year. Dancing videos coming soon. Um, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, all the fun things like this. Awesome. Thank you, Pat. All right, now we have representatives from our International Education Center, so Sue and Sonia. 
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to all the international students that are here with us today. My name is Sue Hodgins. I'm one of the four international student advisors, and I'm here today with my colleague, Sonia, who's in the background answering some of the questions that have been coming in through the Q&A in the chat section. Next slide, please. So as an international student uh, included with your tuition fees, you do have mandatory health insurance, which is covered through GuardMe. As a full-time international student, your health insurance coverage will run from September 1st to August 31st. For those of you that will be studying remotely starting in your home country, you will be able to opt out of the insurance because you need to be in Canada to be covered via GuardMe. You will receive an email within the next couple of weeks. And if you do have any specific questions in regards to your health insurance, please send an email to iecinsurance at algonquincollege.com. It is a medical plan and not a dental plan. So if you would like to receive dental coverage, you are eligible to for an additional cost to purchase that through the Students Association. Next slide, please. So some of the services that we provide in the International Education Center, we do a wide variety of workshops and events. We do partner with the Students Association and AC Hub for a lot of our events. Um, so please check out our events calendar, which will be in one of the other slides. Starting yesterday, we are offering daily, every day, up until middle of September, new events. So please uh, sign up for all our events. We do do workshops related to your IRCC documents, such as study permits, work permits, um, financial workshops. So lots and lots of events that we um, do for students. If at any time you need to reach out to the International Education Center, please send us an email to iecsupport at algonquincollege.com and don't forget to include your Algonquin student number. It just helps us to find out who you are, what program in, and to guide you in the right direction. Next slide, please. So this is the link to our international events and activities calendar. As I mentioned, we have lots of events which started yesterday. So please check it out and sign up for some of our upcoming events. Next slide, please. We also offer a free peer tutoring service, which is through the Student Learning Center. We will support the first 10 hours if you're struggling in some of your courses once you get up and running. So please reach out again to IEC support if you'd like to take advantage of those free 10 hours that we will support you in some of the courses. Next slide, please. We also run an international peer mentorship program that's run through one of my colleagues. This is upper level international students that might have been here for one or two years. And it's a great way to get familiar with what's available as an international student. Maybe they can share some of their stories with you. If you'd like to meet another international student, it may be potentially from the same country. And they do also run a lot of events in coordination with our events coordinator, Natalia Pacheco. So if you're interested in being uh, matched up with an other upper international student, please send an email to internationalmentor at algonquincollege.com. Next slide, please. So these are some of the things to help you get up and running as an international student. I'm sure lots of you already have been receiving lots of emails from our office. This week in particular, you will be receiving an email in regards to the Succeed in Canada, which will be part of your Brightspace. So prior to classes beginning on September 8th, we strongly recommend that you log on and do that Succeed in Canada course. We have also put together an arrival service and self-isolation program. For those of you that are, will be arriving here in Canada, you know that you will have to self-isolate for the first 14 days. Um, some more information in regards to that is on our website. 
We are hosting virtual international student orientation. So if you're an English for academic purpose student, that will be held September 3rd. For the academic programs, we have a full slot either on September the 4th and September the 9th. You will also be receiving an email in regards to a new app that we have, the iSent app for all international students. So this week you'll be receiving an email on how to download that and it's a great new resource that we have at your fingertips to download on your phone. Next slide please. So thanks everyone and we look forward to seeing you first part of September. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Sue. Okay, now we have Melissa from our academics department. Melissa? Hi, everyone. I am Melissa Statton. I am the Academic Advising and Program Orientation Coordinator at Algonquin, and I just want to welcome everyone who's signed into the webinar today. It's great to see so many people. Well, not see, but, you know, sort of see. <laughs> Next slide, please, Michelle. So what I'm going to be going over today is, other than your instructors, there's really three people in your department that you want to really have a solid idea of who they are uh, going into your studies. So the first one would be your program coordinator. And they're the one I've been getting a lot of uh, questions in the Q&A about needing to change your schedule or having questions about your timetable. And that would be the program coordinator would be the first person that you would want to talk to about that. They are responsible for course planning, course scheduling, anything like that. Then your academic advisor, they are the ones that sort of talk about um, your academic goals, your big picture questions. If you find yourself falling a little bit off track once you start at um, Algonquin in your studies, they would be the person that you'd want to talk to. They can help you with sort of those big picture planning questions. And then you also have your student success specialist. Now each program has a student success specialist and they are the best way to refer to them is sort of your compass when it comes to all of the resources and supports on campus. They can help direct you to where you need to go if you're not sure. So now one thing to note, your program coordinator and academic advisor, especially in smaller programs, might be the same person. So if you are looking on our website and you notice the same name, that is on purpose in some smaller programs that, that is the same person. Uh, next slide, please, Michelle. So I'm just going to go over a few tips that I've um, seen help a lot of students when it comes to getting started in, uh, in college. So one thing, especially with working remotely for the most part, you really want to plan out your day. So if you have schedule, if you have classes that are scheduled at a certain time, also with homework, as well as time to relax, don't forget that because that is also equally important. Make connections with your classmates, your instructors, and your academic success team, and the earlier in the term, the better. I know working remotely, it can be a little bit challenging to make those connections, but you know, once you get started in your classes, most programs have a bright space homeroom, which is where the hub of your program is. So regardless of the class you're in, everyone in your program has this bright space homeroom, and you can connect with your classmates there. Improve your study skills, and that's a little bit broad, but it really depends on where your challenges are when it comes to your study skills. Some people are, you know, really good at procrastinating. Others are, uh, you know, have trouble really understanding what it is that they're reading. So the Student Learning Center has a ton of workshops and a ton of resources available to you. I would definitely recommend you check out that. Next slide, please, Michelle. Create a regular study space, stay organized, and eliminate distractions. So this is especially important uh, working from home. Uh, I know that I've had to set up a particular area in my apartment uh, to really focus in on when it is, that, where it is that I'm doing my, um, my work. So this will help you establish a routine and give you a designated place to go. If you can avoid it, try not to have your bed be your study space. Um, I get that in some cases that's not possible, but try to keep your bed to you know, be the place that you go to sleep. Hold yourself accountable or find someone to help hold you accountable, especially, you know, there's going to be days where it's nice out and you need to be finishing a paper. Hold yourself accountable to a friend, a classmate, a family member to get that done, even if you want to go outside. Sometimes you just need to get it done. And similar to this, set a goal and reward yourself after. So if you do get that paper done, go outside, have fun. Um, you know, finish an assignment, have time for, you know, make time for an episode of your favorite show. And uh, next slide, please. So the best way to find your uh, academic success team is through our website. So that is uh, algonquincollege.com uh, slash academic success. And from there, you can find your student success specialist, your program coordinator, your academic advisor, as well. We have a very uh, well 
trying to think of the word, a really good FAQ. So if you put in your question, chances are you'll be able to find the answer as well. There's a contact us form too, and uh, you can fill that out and that gets sent directly to our area and we can help uh, answer your question there. That's it for me. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Those are all great tips. Next up, we have Janice from our co-op department. Hi everyone, welcome to Algonquin. Uh, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of cooperative education. Um, so I'll start with the first slide. Okay, so there are lots of types of work integrated learning um, that you can partake in at the college, depending on which program you're in. So not all uh, programs have co-op as an option. Some have um, placements or uh, field placements or internships. So I'm just going to outline really quickly um, the difference you can see in this chart. So what co-op is, is a 16 week uh, work placement and, and that's separate from um, your actual classes. At the bottom it says separate or concurrent. It's separate from your classes. So you would do a class and then you would do a work term. Um, it is a, a paid opportunity. So that's kind of nice, everyone likes that and it is full-time, not part-time. Next slide. Okay, so what is co-op exactly? So first of all, as I mentioned before, it is full-time hours, that's 35 plus hours a week. Um, it has to be a paid placement, um, and it's got to be four months, so it runs an entire um, semester for you and it's integrated into your academic progression. So um, it's very specific when you will do your co-op. Uh, you'll be notified prior to um, your co-op when you will be getting involved in that and applying. Um, it's also work that has to be related to your program. So what that means is that when you graduate, if you've done co-op terms, you have experience in your field already. Next slide. Okay, so these are little pieces of good news. Three facts about co-op. So these are actually, we have statistics on these things. So one fact is that it increases your learning. So um, when you're doing your work in your placement, you're applying the knowledge that you have gotten through your classes and vice versa. Then when you go back to class, then you're applying the knowledge that you had in real life work to the stuff that you're learning in class. Um, secondly, it makes you more employable. There are statistics that show that um, people that have completed co-op placements within their program um, are definitely are hired more easily than others because you're walking out of the doors after you get your credential uh, with some work experience on your resume as well. And third thing, also a good thing, long-term money. Um, so statistically as well, um, students that have participated in co-op earn between two and $8,000 more than those who did not. So that's kind of exciting. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so there are three phases of co-op. So once you sign up for co-op, there are three distinct phases. So number one is the prep term phase. So for one semester, while you're in classes, you'll be prepping for co-op. That means getting yourself ready with your resume, your cover letter, and you do a course that is going to prep you for that work term when you eventually get to it. And that, would, that won't be the next term, it'll be the one after that. The following semester, you're in your job search term, and that's when you're actively looking for work, you're applying for jobs, whether that's on your own or on our database, and you're interviewing and hoping to secure a co-op during that period of time, and that's another semester. And then the semester directly following that is when you're actually out on your work term. Uh, in some programs, you'll have two work terms back to back, other times you'll have a work term and then there'll be a break and you'll go back to your classes and then you'll have another work term. Next slide. Okay, so for all of our students that are international students, just a couple of points here. We love our international students and we've found that they have great success with finding work, which is wonderful. Number one, very, very important, you need a co-op work permit. 
Um, so you do have to apply for that. We do recommend uh, that you do that well in advance um, of starting your co-op because you do need it. Uh, we'll definitely give you more information well in advance prior to when you have to do that. Um, okay, and another thing is work experience does help you. So if you are, uh, if you do have a part-time job, uh, that's great. That's great experience on your resume. Uh, if not, volunteering, there are opportunities to volunteer. Um, definitely attend our workshops to find out more about that and how you can make your resume look good and make yourself look appealing to employers. Um, another thing is to add languages to your resume. That is something that is definitely a selling feature for employers. Uh, they do like that. So um, if you have other languages, then please do list them on your resume. Um, be proud of where you come from. I think that goes without saying, but I think that your culture is really a wonderful thing that you can um, share with others. Uh, and that's at school and in the workplace. And one, we get a lot of questions about, yes, you can work for government departments. Uh, we do have international students that are able to achieve security clearance and get jobs with the federal government in Canada. Okay, next slide. Okay, co-op eligibility. So there are some programs where you have applied and it's directly through OCAS. And so you're applying directly into a co-op program so you know that you're in it. Um, others, the application may come after the fact. You may be uh, admitted to co-op. One of the things that you do need to do is maintain a GPA of 2.7 or higher. Um, that's the cutoff line for um, entrance into co-op. Okay, the next thing is that you have to complete all of the courses that you're supposed to do prior to your co-op work term. Um, some of them are considered um, essential to you being able to going out on co-op, uh, simply because it gives you the skill sets that you need to actually go into the workplace. Um, of course, you have to remain in good standing with the college and not be encumbered. So that means that you wouldn't have any outstanding fees. That's an important thing. Otherwise, you will not be permitted to go out in your work term. And of course, when you're in your work term, we uh, expect that you would be a good college sitter and promote the college well, and of course, yourself. Next slide. That's everything. Thank you. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask. Um, I highly recommend that you check out our website. Um, there are some really inspiring videos on there about students in the workplace, and uh, I think it'll get you excited about co-op. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Now we have Matthew from our tech support team. Good morning, everyone. I'm Matthew Wally. I am a senior case resolution technician for ITS. So if you have a tech support inquiry, uh, either myself or a member of the ITS team will be responding to it. Um, next slide, please. So one of the most important uh, IT tools that you'll be using at Algonquin College is your network account. Um, first time students of Algonquin College will be signing into the website acsis.algonquincollege.com to retrieve their network account information. To sign in for the first time, you'll be providing your student number and your date of birth. Date of birth is entered through three drop down boxes. And after you complete that initial sign in, you'll be prompted to create a security question for account recovery as well as set a new, more secure password for future uses. Once you've signed into a CSIS, on the left-hand side of the window, fourth option down from the top of the menu is Network Account Info, and under that section is where you'll find your user ID and your network account password. Uh, next slide, please. So your network account provides you access to many different services. Uh, the most important ones are Brightspace and student email. Brightspace is where students will be uh, completing their course activities, receiving uh, lessons from their instructors. Um, sometimes special events at the college are posted there so you can track those events there as well. 
your student email is the primary method uh, by which staff of, at Algonquin College and faculty at Algonquin College will be contacting you. You can also use it to communicate with your uh, fellow students uh, when collaborating on projects. Uh, the last piece of uh, last important service there is Office 365, which is a copy of Microsoft Office that is available to all students at Algonquin College, regardless of the type of course or program you're enrolled in. You will always receive an Office 365 subscription. Um, the other services that are listed here, um, you may or may not qualify for, depending on the type of program you're enrolled in. And if you are interested in any of the services listed on this page, feel free to contact ITS at 5555 at .com and uh, we can provide you further guidance. Next slide, please. So learning from home is gonna be a new experience for a lot of you, and we've taken the time to prepare some additional supplementary materials to assist with getting uh, accustomed with wor working from home. Uh, on the left hand side there is the ITS created knowledge base articles. Uh, in particular, the study and work from home has links to all of the critical resources that will guide you on how to work from home, get connected to your uh, college resources, your college storage, everything like that. Um, there's the Brightspace Essentials course, which is completely optional, but it does give you a walkthrough of how to use Brightspace and has a couple of exercises uh, to give you a simulation of what completing coursework will be like uh, during the actual semester. And uh, Zoom is the primary method by which uh, most courses will be delivered to you, most lectures will be delivered to you. Uh, and so we do have some Zoom support resources available to you there as well. Uh, next slide, please. So I'll uh, ITS has partnered with the Student Learning Center to deliver some workshops uh, during the first week of classes. So we have uh, drop-in support for both network account credentials as well as for Brightspace. And we are also doing uh, workshop tutorials regarding how to use Brightspace and how to use your email and Office 365 accounts to complete your learning. Uh, Student Learning Center has many other workshops being offered all throughout August and September, so also be sure to check out their calendar. Uh, lots of great stuff to learn there. Next slide, please. So, uh, ITS understands that not every support request can be handled over the phone or by email correspondence, and so we are doing in-person support. However, we are switching to an appointment-only uh, scheduling method. So our hours of operation are posted there. Uh, if you come to the college during those times and you wanna get tech support, uh, you can line up. And if there is an opening to assist you, we will pair you with a technician. But if you wanna guarantee that you will receive service when you come on campus, you can scan that QR code there or you can go to the website that's at that tiny URL and you can book your support session with ITS and um, get the support you need. Alternatively, our email address and our phone number are printed there, uh, and you can reach us at either of those communication methods uh, to receive support. Um, that's everything I got today, so last slide, please. Um, if I could offer you all one last piece of advice, uh, Office 365, your account that you get through your network account, uh, does come with one terabyte of cloud storage. Uh, through OneDrive, and it's a really good idea to have a backup of all of your coursework uh, because every year there's at least one student that suffers a critical data failure, and you don't want that student to be you. So make sure you've got a backup and you'll be protected. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Matthew, and thank you to all of our panelists for presenting today on your department. And thank you to our students for submitting your questions and listening in. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that this is being recorded, so it will be added onto the algonquincollege.com slash orientation website. So you'll be able to watch um, this whole presentation again right from the beginning. Um, and now we're going to open it up for live Q&A. So I'll just stop sharing the screen. Okay, now we have a question here um, about co-op. So Janice, I'm going to come to you. 
The question is, um, I'm interested in the co-op in a co-op program, but I'm still on the wait list for fall 2020. So I'm going to start the non co-op program for this semester. Is it possible to switch to the co-op option for the same program at a later date? If yes, how? Um, okay, so the answer to that is um, most likely. It depends on the program you're in. Um, usually, if it's a program that has, if it has a co-op option um, and there are spaces available, and usually there are, um, what we do is we open it up to students to apply for that. So it's something like you will be notified of the opportunity if there is any opportunity at all. We want to get as many students in to have the co-op experience. So it is very possible. Um, if, if you'd like, one thing I would recommend is you drop uh, just an email to our general mailbox. It's co-op at algonquincollege.com asking that question and somebody will get back to you with details um, be, because it's specific to your program. Thank you. And then, so there's one, um, another question about co-op, just, uh, sorry, it's gone now, but it was about um, organizations. So with coronavirus, like, are organizations still accepting co-op students or how would that look? Uh, they are, absolutely. And we find that one of the things that has happened is much like with a lot of workplaces, uh, they've switched to um, a, a digital format where you're able to work remotely. Um, there are some places that are offering sort of minimal interaction in the workplace. It depends on the program that you're in. Obviously, if you're in a construction program, then you're going to be on site, but um, there are um, appropriate protocols in place for people's safety. But uh, I, there has been a real shift in terms of jobs where you would maybe be at a desk that you are working remotely. And we do have a, quite a few students that are doing that right now. Thank you. Matthew, I have an IT question. So a student's asking, if we need a special app for our program, will the college give us access to these or do we have to buy these applications? Uh, that's a loaded question. Um, for the most part, the college goes out of its way to provide you with all the software you would need to complete your learning. Um, sometimes instructors do recommend additional applications to facilitate in your studies, and those may or may not be covered uh, by your uh, IT fee. Uh, but if you go to Brightspace, and uh, once you sign into Brightspace under the digital resource portal, you'll see all of these software offerings for uh, your programs. Um, for students of the computer systems technician programs and programs like that, there's an additional digital resource link called Azure. And that has um, things like Microsoft Server, um, VMware, a bunch of supplementary softwares to assist with working in a virtual environment. Great, thank you. Okay, Janine, I have a question about bursaries. So there's a student asking, I have a bursary and a scholarship that I got accepted for. My question is, will I see it on my Access account? How will I know if my program is getting the money? But, what I would suggest for that is that the student reach out to um, the student uh, awards team to make sure that it is put towards their, on their account. Um, and you can reach the team by emailing studentawards at algonquincollege.com. Thank you. And Matthew, another tech question. Are we required to purchase a laptop approved, or maybe a course material, sorry. Are we, required to purchase a laptop approved by Algonquin College? If so, is this covered under OSAP? Um, I can feel that a little bit. Uh, you're, not, you're not forced to purchase any specific laptop, uh, especially not from Algonquin. Um, Algonquin does provide recommendations on the laptop uh, that will best meet your course's needs. Uh, and the college does have laptops that match those specifications available to purchase. Um, but if you're able to find um, an offering from a different retailer, you're completely free to go pursue that option as well. Great, thank you. Um, okay, there's a couple more co-op questions. 
Um, so what's the difference between co-op and a field placement? And then um, Janice, there's also students asking about whether their program is eligible for co-op. So I know, I just wanna also mention AC Day One, um, co-op is having a one hour workshop. So on Tuesday, September 8th, um, you can sign up for that workshop on the Algonquin College.com slash orientation website and learn more about co-op, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I would highly recommend attending that too because we can get a little more in depth. There are quite a few details with regard to co-op, but just to answer quickly, um, one way that you can check if your if your program does have co-op is to go on the, the Algonquin College website to check out your program itself and it will indicate whether or not co-op is an option. Um, usually in those course descriptions it will also indicate whether or not it's a co-op or if there's a field placement. Um, so the difference is that the one thing that stands out about co-op is that it is a full-time paid placement and it's integrated into your um, into your academic progression. So you're going to have terms where you're just solely going out um, and, and working in a, in a job, in a placement that's relevant to your field. Um, Co-ops have to be paid. Field placements um, could be, but um, sometimes are not. Uh, field placements are usually shorter in length. They could be something like six or eight weeks, depending on the um, on what is required within your program and co-ops are a full four month period of time and they must be because it's actually a full semester at working. And that's, those are the biggest differences. Uh, field placement could or could not be a paid placement and usually shorter in length. Okay, thank you. And there's a question about um, meeting peers. So the question says, are there going to be methods for us to meet and get to know our peers, even with remote learning? And absolutely, yes. Um, please join us on Tuesday, September 8th. We have a bunch of social activities and games going on starting at 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So the last session is the virtual Ar Arkells concert. And we'll be um, playing like all yeah, remote games and going into breakout rooms and you have the opportunity to meet your peers and um, connect with the Algonquin College community. So that's your first day after you attend your program orientation. Please join us, sign up for the workshops that work with your schedule. Um, and then after AC Day One, um, between the AC Hub, International Center, the Student Association, we all have um, activities and events going on regularly. Um, so you'll see this on our social media accounts and on our website. Um, there's virtual escape rooms and lots of exciting things coming up this fall. So we definitely encourage you to get involved and um, stay connected and engage with the community. Okay, okay the next question. Uh, my course says that it is uh, bring your own uh, BYOD, bring your device that requires the ability to run Microsoft software. Is that just Microsoft Word? Um, could any computer be used for school? Um, I can answer that one again. Um, so for every program, there will be different software needs. Uh, the best person to ask about your individual program software needs is your program coordinator. And based on their response, if they say you only need uh, to use Microsoft Office, well, Microsoft Office can be used on just about any computer. But if you're using advanced design software like AutoCAD or Adobe uh, Design Suites, well, you'll need something that's capable of running that software. Um, but the best place to start is your program coordinator. Find out what software you'll be using over the course of the term. And then based on their answer, you can start to looking into a computer that can run that software. Thank you. And we have an international student um, that was accepted yesterday. And I think they were, sorry, it's gone now. They were just asking about, um, I think like international orientation and next steps. Yeah, so I think I just <laughs> sort of was answering that question. But if you were just accepted yesterday and you received an offer letter, um, then I would say it'll probably take within the next week because once you receive an offer letter, you need to pay your tuition fees. International students follow the same regular process for registration as domestic students. So once you've paid your fees, and I know this week the RO has released timetables, so probably either this week or early next week, you should be able to see your schedule on access. 
Great, thank you. Okay, there's a student um, asking about AC cards. So Liv, I'm going to come to you. Last week I uploaded my photo for my card, but I haven't got an email regarding to pick up, regarding my appointment to pick up the card. Yeah, um, we're receiving a really high volume of emails and, and card submissions since we're doing only online this term. Um, so there is a delay. Uh, if you have not heard, I would suggest waiting another five business days. If you have not heard from card services by then, then please email photo ID at algonquincollege.com. Um, I think you probably will hear from them in the next five or so business days, but if not, you can reach out to them directly. And I'll reply to that. I'll put the email. I see the question here, so I can put that in there. Thank you. Okay, Janine, I'm coming to you. Can you apply for a scholarship and award before school starts, or do you have to have a certain GPA first before you can qualify to apply? So for the most part, um, our scholarships uh, would be for our bachelor programs. And if students have applied for those, they may have received some information about that. The remaining amounts are basically our bursaries. That's the big chunk of it. And again, those will open on August 24th, so next week, and will be open until October 5th. So the bursary portal will be open for that um, six weeks, and then it will be distributed after we receive all the applications. Thank you. Okay, there's a question about um, athletics. So I assume that athletic activities are being suspended. Uh, when we'll be able to register for orientation events? So registration open for orientation yesterday. Um, you can check out the algonquinhalls.com slash orientation website. You can sign up for AC day one. Um, there's a bunch of activities listed there. And there's also, um, we even have yoga happening on AC day one. So if you're interested in athletic activities, I might recommend that. Um, the health services team is actually going to be hosting um, biweekly yoga um, throughout the fall semester. So that's a great free event for you to take part in. I know the Students Association, um, I think Patrick has signed off, but um, the Student Association is hosting um, live um, Instagram workouts. So I think it's, uh, they post weekly um, different workouts that you can do. And then um, we also host, like we'll bring in uh, gyms from the Ottawa community to host live workouts for students to um, participate in for free. And there's, sorry, I just messaged um, Patrick and he said that there are lots of Zoom workouts coming for the fall semester, so look out for those. Okay, and Olivia, there's a student asking if it's too late to submit a card photo. No, it's not. That's a great question. No, it's not too late. Um, and I'll, I'll put this detail, again, I'll reply in writing. Um, it's not too late. So you can submit your photo. Um, and I'll put the website in there, but you can submit it really anytime. It's just kind of the sooner the better. Um, the sooner you submit it, and again, because we're receiving such a high volume, the sooner you'll get it. Um, and for anyone who's on the call and curious, if you are gonna be using your UPASS, it will be active as of September 1st, 2020. Um, so if you want your UPASS as of the date it's active, then you should submit it, your, your photos sooner rather than later. Okay, thank you. Um, Melissa, there's a question about online classes. So will every class be recorded um, if there's some kind of emergency or uh, technical issue? Can I, or if I get dis disconnected, will I be able to watch it later? So I think it just depends on the program coordinator, but Melissa. I'll... Yeah, it really depends on the program. So once you uh, get access to your classes on Brightspace, uh, you can then contact your instructor. And the instructor should also um, on Brightspace indicate how their classes are going to be run, whether it's um, whether they're going to be doing a live lecture or whether they're going to be offering uh, pre-recorded lectures that you can watch on your own time. My understanding from what I've been hearing from most of the program areas is they will be recorded and available on Brightspace just because we understand that A, some students are going to be international and will be on very different time zones. So if the lecture is scheduled for 6 p.m. and you're in, I don't know what, I'm, I'm not good with time zones, but I'm, I'm assuming that if it's 6 p.m. here, it might be like midnight somewhere else where you are. So there's no expectation that you're gonna be up at midnight watching a lecture. That seems a little 
not fair. Um, so they will mostly be uh, recorded. Now, if there's a situation where it's not and you're worried, definitely contact your instructor and uh, touch base with them and they'll come up with a plan for you. Great, thank you. And the student's also um, just asking, they're an international student, but they're wondering um, how to change their timetable and how to get connected with an advisor. Oh, sorry, this would be, I think, international. Or academic advisor. <laughs> if it's, um, so, sorry, what was the first part of the question? I only, I focused on the academic advising piece. <laughs> Um, I think it was changing, sorry. Oh, changing, okay, yeah, changing their course. So courses are mostly pretty set in stone um, because uh, program coordinators need to plan and account for class sizes and all of that. But if you have an extenuating circumstance and you're looking at your timetable and you do need to make some sort of change, your first point of contact would be your program coordinator. Um, and I will, um, I'll post a link for how to find your program coordinator in the chat. Um, as well as academic advising, I'll um, also post, you can find your academic advisor on that same website. Great, thank you. Um, do we have to purchase all of our books before the start date of our courses? Can we get a refund if we decided to drop a course? I'll answer that, I was just about to type it out. Um, it's re always recommended that you purchase your books before the start date or the week of, but that's always dependent on what your instructor says. Your instructor might not require the use of that book until maybe three weeks in, so it's all dependent. I would reach out to your professor via Brightspace just to kind of confirm if that's a concern for you. Um, if you do end up dropping a class, you usually can get a refund. It depends on the reasoning, or you can do our buyback program. So that's available on the campus. So I'll respond to it with the link for the buyback. Uh, so basically, it just means that if you purchase your book, you're able to um, sell it back to the bookstore, and then you get your money back. Basically, I'll respond to that there. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, and Olivia, students asking if um, they're taking an online course, do they still need their AC card? That's a really great question. Um, so if you're taking an online course, you can still get an AC card and there are many benefits to having one. Um, so one of the major benefits this term is if you are a student who's paid an IT fee, then you will have um, access to your print balance and your AC card is the way that you can do contactless printing. So you don't actually have to touch the computer, you release the job from your computer and then you tap your AC card to any printer on campus and it'll release that job for you. Um, you can also use your AC card for a variety of things on campus, like accessing your meal plan. Um, it's a form of payment, so you can put funds on it and purchase items at the campus store or from food services. Um, but if you're not planning on being on campus, you might still want an AC card. Um, I know that a lot of places offer discounts if you have a student card and um, it's always great, especially when you're a student to get a discount. I think Amazon, for example, you get a membership for almost half price. Like there's a lot of benefits. If you don't feel that you'll need it, you don't need to submit uh, a photo. You can wait until next term. Awesome, thank you. And that's a really great point. I remember so I'm also a Gonquin College alumni and having a student card was perfect for, yeah, I've been going to like a ski resort or something that, yeah, there's a lot of places that offer um, student discounts. But I do just want to uh, make note of the time. We're at 1029, so we're wrapping up this session. But I just want to thank all of the students and thank all of the panelists for joining us today. Um, I do recognize that there's still some questions in the Q&A tab, so we're going to sort through these and then send out an email to everyone who registered for this session with our FAQ document to hopefully um, give you some clarity on questions you still might have. And I also just want to um, recommend that you watch the AC startup webinars. So it's similar to what you just participated in, but they're a little bit more in depth on specific topics and they're shorter. Um, so please check that out. And then also please do sign up for virtual AC day one and get connected and stay connected with the Algonquin College community. Thank you, everyone.